we were talking with Chris Buskirk, and Chris, we're, we've been talking about uh, what made America great and the art of the possible. How can we get back there? But, but individual liberty, the entrepreneurial spirit, these are the things, it, it was a spirit that made America great, the spirit of liberty. Can you expound on that? Yeah, it it was. You know, you think about the the context here. You have these um, you have settlers coming from Europe, and you know, Europe was uh, was highly populated, highly regulated. It was hard to own property, um, and so there was a natural sort of constraining function on the on the talent of the people. And so, you know, we had a very uh, industrious uh, risk. Uh, uh, risk-friendly group of people who came to the United States. Why? Because they wanted to make their lives better. They wanted to make the lives better for uh, their families. And, and, you know, I hasten to add, it was quite common, especially early, early in the founding year in the in the 17th century, it was pretty common for entire congregations to come. I mean, the Scrooby congregation is who the people we know as the pilgrims. They moved as an entire church congregation. They wanted to make their lives better for their friends, for their for their church family as well. And those people came to the United States and uh, they had a tabula rasa. They had a clean slate. There's all this land. Uh, there's all these resources. Um, you know, and by the way, that sounds fantastic in one way, and it is. It's also terrifying because there was nothing there. They they just had to scratch a new civilization out of the dust of the ground, and they did. And it's one of the, you know, it's one of the most uh, awe-inspiring feats, I think, in human history. And people you know, people had a can-do attitude. Like the the job of America for 300 years, uh, you know, I think about it from like basically 1607 until maybe the 1900-ish or, you know, 1907 or whatever, was conquering the continent and building a new nation. And people figured out how to do that. And what as, as a result of doing that, all of these different sort of innovations came came around. It wasn't just we can build a new city. That's a huge undertaking. It was also we can build new technologies. Like we can, uh, you know, the, we have, think about the uh, the Wright brothers and their uh, bicycle shop, right? I mean, the prevailing sentiment at the time was that flight, of course, was impossible. Um, and they did it out of their little bicycle shop and, you know, having been mocked for even trying. And that was pretty, I mean, they're obviously, stand, they are obviously standout people, but that was, I think, a part of the American spirit. Risk taking. It was, we were risk takers and do it for a reason, right? I mean, there's a re there's a concrete reason I'm going to make my life better and make my family's life better. I'm going to make my nation's life better. Uh, you know, I'm doing this. And for in many, in many cases, I'm doing this because I'm going to use my time, talent and treasure to serve God. Um, and a lot of that has really changed. And part of that maybe is the closing the frontier and people don't know what to do next. I do think that's a part of it. Um, part of it is, is is that you know the country's politics have quite honestly changed in a way that focuses people more on say political battles or cultural battles, sometimes good, sometimes bad. Uh, but it takes their time and their talents away from focusing on things that concretely uh, improve living standards, which I think is what we really need to refocus our efforts on. Yeah. No. In fact. Uh, you think about that we were risk takers, now we're risk averse, and we're demanding that the government protect us from any risk, which is the whole COVID shutdown, the masks, everything. It's a perfect example of uh, a certain segment of the population demanding their government step in to protect us. And of course, to the government, that's an opportunity for power. And so absolutely we'll fill that vacuum. Yeah, I mean, look, one of my main contentions um, in the, that I make in this book and that I that I think is true just in life in general is that excessive risk aversion actually heightens your risk right you life is full of risk if you try and protect yourself from any downside you never accomplish anything and you know sort of and you you talked about it a little bit before there, there's there's only two uh, there's only two ways to go in life up or down forward or back like there's just no neutral right so if we're growing if we're not growing we're necessarily are shrinking. If we're not, our country is not becoming more prosperous, we're going to become poorer. And it's a choice we have to make. And I think that, you know, behind some of this risk aversion, the excessive uh, risk aversion that I think has sort of overtaken a lot of the country is this thought that, that kind of like, you know, we're pretty wealthy, things are going pretty good. Let's just pause. Let's hold it right here. And that's how civilizations decay and die.